So hello everyone, hope you all are well out there. Astronomy isn't just about seeing or capturing stars. It's about understanding the more basic or sometimes even the more complex thing about it. It can make you believe about something easily or make it hard for you to believe it. So, Dadam, welcome to the world of astronomy. It's me, Anjali Shwadatta here, a new student at Azerbaijan. Well, now, as far well as you could have known, this session is now going to happen about the most magical length of the universe, that is the 21 centimeter length. So, yeah, without delaying, let's proceed with it. So, what is 21 centimeter length? Is it just a line which you draw by a scale or something really interesting? Well, the hydrogen line or 21 centimeter line or H1 line, whatever you call it, is created by the energy of a solitary, means a single electrical neutral hydrogen atom. And in this transition, the electron within a hydrogen atom flips its spin orientation while transitioning from higher energy state to a lower energy state. Means if it will be in H1, it will go to the H2 or like this above, means, means from, no, from the H2, it will go to the lower, like this, means from the higher energy state to a lower energy state. This change in electron spin results in the emission of electromagnetic radiation at the wavelength of approximately 21 centimeter or 21.1 centimeter to be more precise. So now you could have known why it is known as 21 centimeter. And uh, also one more point that uh, this radiation from hydrogen penetrates the dust clouds and give us a more complete map of that of a star themselves also can give. Means it is much more have importance than anyone can think of. Now, well, if you look at this picture, this one, which I have written 21 centimeter line frequency and its different ages, you will see that this page this image shows the different frequency at which the 21 centimeter line exists. And also you can see the different ages. Like here you can see the dark age, right? Okay. Now, again, another important question will came to your mind that what is the cause of it? Well, it actually arises from a quantum mechanical phenomena involving the spin of an electron in a hydrogen atom. In a hydrogen atom, the electron orbits in the proton in its nucleus and it has the property of spin, which is akin to a time magnetic movement, mu or mu. You can tell it anything like this spin can have two orientation, parallel and antiparallel to the proton spin. Now, when the electron spin flips from one orientation to the other, like uh, means from parallel to antiparallel or vice versa, it undergoes an energy transition. This transition emits or absorbs electromagnetic radiation. And this energy transition associated with the electron spin flip correspond to a very specific wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum, which is approximately 21 centimeters. Or you can say 21.10611405412 2 centimeter to be precise. You don't need to remember this long value actually, but now you could uh, you could be sure that why it is called 21 centimeter. And also this wavelength is in the radio frequency. Now the main question arises: who is that great man who discovered it and how did it originate? Well, this so during the 1930s means it's really far far away from us it has happened uh, long ago it was noticed that there was a radio hiss like a snake hiss like that radio uh, which radio hiss radio hiss refers to the background noise or static that can be heard when a tuning a radio receiver to a frequency where no strong or clear signal is present this noise is typically the consists of random electrical or thermal noise generated within the radio receiver so that it can interference from various sources such as atmospheric condition, electronic devices or other radio signals. 
so that radio is that varied on a daily cycle and appeared to be extraterrestrial in origin. After initial suggestions from many other people, it was observed that the radio waves seemed to be propagated from the center of the galaxy. These discoveries were published in 1940 and were noted by the great man Jan Oth. The existence of 21 centimeter line was first predicted theoretically by, um, here you can see, Henrik C. Van. Henrik C. Van D. Hurst, well, is actually a long name, but he is really a great man. So, like, it was first predicted theoretically by Dutch astronomer Henrik C. Van D. Hurst in 1944 during the World War II. He recognized that the energy transition associated with the electron spin films in hydrogen atom could result in the emission of radio waves at a very specific wavelength, which correspond to about 21 centimeters. That's why it's named as 21 centimeters. But after the war, in 1951, astronomers Edward P. Purcell, uh, like uh, you can say Evan or Purcell, P. Purcell and Harold Evan, you can call them Evan and Purcell. So they, uh, at Howard University, set out to confirm Van de Hurst's theoretical prediction. So they helped, they like uh, predicted and helped them, help Hendrik to means, prove his theoretical prediction. Now, well, like you can see here, the origin and being at a different part of different ages. The first star and reorganization area era. So now the most practical question will appear. Was this uses an application? Like everything in this world has some uses, right? So like everything have is uses, but we just have to use it. And we don't know if we don't use something, like we can't say just this is useless. We just can't use it. That's why we can't use. So now the most practical question will appear. Uh, well, it was a wrong twist. <laughs> Don't mind it. Now, the most practical question will uh, appear. What is this used as an application? First, in radio astronomy. Let's first look at radio astronomy. Well, the 21 centimeter spectral line appears within the radio spectrum. The hydrogen line can readily penetrate clouds of interstellar cosmic dust that are opaque to visible light. Assuming that the hydrogen atoms are uniformly distributed throughout the galaxy, each line of sight through the galaxy will reveal a hydrogen line. This observation has been used indirectly to calculate the mass of the galaxy. You can think how much big it is. Or to put limits to and change over time of the fine structure constant, like the 137, and to study the dynamics of an individual galaxy. Like there in our, like this whole universe, there are many galaxies. So it is also used to calculate the uh, study of the dynamics of the individual galaxies. Also, this magnetic field strength, also the magnetic field strength of interstellar space can be measured by observing the Zeeman effect of the 21 centimeter line. Now, let's, uh, like, this is, was about the radio astronomy uses. There are many others, but, like, we are going to discuss only two applications. So, the, another application is in cosmology. The line, you could be really amazed to know that this line, this magical line is really of great inter interest in Big Bang cosmology. Because, why? Because it is the only known way to prove the cosmological dark ages from recombination when stable hydrogen first form to reionization, means from the cosmological dark ages, recombination to reionization. Including the red shift. Red shift means like it's an uh, astronomical term. You could know it about it later. So, including the red shift, this line will be observed at frequency from 200 megahertz to about 15 megahertz on Earth. It potentially has two applications. First, mapping the intensity of red shifted 21 centimeter radiation. Second, it can provide a picture of how the universe was reionized as neutral hydrogen 
which has been ionized by radiation from stars or quasar will appear as holes in the 21 centimeter background. So like it can map the universe and it can also tell you how and or give or provide you a brief idea of how the universe was reionized. So like it have a lot of application, like is a magical lens and it does have a lot of application, but not to make this session long, I'm only limiting it to two applications. You can search for more of his uh, like application, more of his about his data in the Wikipedia or anywhere. You will find many pages, many secret means many reports about it. And I really encourage you to read about it. It's really interesting. Okay, in summary, it has many more users and applications than it seems to have. You know why? Because it's a universal magical line. Okay, now it's time for some animated animation. Okay, let me go. Yeah. Okay, so this platform, as you can see, it is PyCharm. And I am here using Matplotlib for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matplotlib. You can see this Matplotlib, right? I'm using Matplotlib matrix to run my code. Well, this code was actually made by me. Uh, well, this code is made by me, but it's not important for you to understand what is this code is made of. And these are also here some code of mine which I have made. But now let's look at the most interesting part that is the animated plus. Okay, let me run it. Here is the run button. Can you see it? Yeah. So this code, actually the code I have made, it creates a plot. Like what this graph means, means we have to interpret, right? So this code actually, Creates a plot where the x-axis here, the x-axis represent the velocity in kilometer per second, and the y-axis presents the flux density. Flux density or intensity. The, the central feature of this plot is that the spectral line associated with a 21 centimeter line. Here it is called the slider wizard. Okay, like here it is called the slider wizard. I can change the values here. Whatever I change, it will go accordingly. Okay. Like it is going automatically, right? It's an animated plot. So uh, the slider widget here is like added, allowing the users, means you can also use it, like allowing the users for the central, to adjust the central velocity. Here, the thing you are seeing, where is the cursor? Yeah, uh, here. This, this is called the central velocity or the peak velocity of the spectral line uh, interactively. Now coming to the interactive exploration part, means what is it? By moving the sliders, you can change the central velocity of the spectral line, which I have told earlier. Like it is going forward, right? If I make it backward, it will come backward. So like it is following my direction, means it is automatically, uh, it can automatically run, but the slider is also you uh, put to make you interactive and make you know how it is done. So this stimulates the Doppler shift. Actually, what does it uh, relate to? It relates to the, and it simulates the Doppler shift of the 21 centimeter line. As if an astronomical object, its varying velocity is observed. Is observed. Now, what is the physical interpretation of it? It actually helps understand how the Doppler effect causes the 21 centimeter line to shift in wavelength and how this shift is reflected in the observed spectrum. So you can understand, means it helps you to understand the Doppler effect, which causes the 21 centimeter line and how this shift is reflected in the observed spectrum. So, it dem is also demonstrate how astronomers use the spectral observation to determine the motion of hydrogen gas in galaxy and other astronomical objects. Well, if you like this, you can tell me in the comments or somewhere else.
this was the code which I made by really a uh, great time, like uh, some two, uh, two to three days. Okay. If you like this code, then just tell me in the comments or let the intro to Astro group know about it. So, well, well, then I guess this is the end. So, great thank you to all the audience and the viewers here. And mostly to Intro to Astro Group for giving me such a big chance. And like the session could have gone means a long way, but I didn't want to make it. So till then, happy discovering. Bye-bye. Be happy and stay safe.